G'day you guys, it's Jar here and welcome back to Seduce Me, the Otome. So, we can get back on into it because I feel like we're coming close to an ending maybe, question mark. We'll see, I'm not really sure. We'll just see how we go with this spicy Otome. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, previously, the boys left us, this mystery woman named Diana came and we made a deal with her. So we're going to see what happens next. I awoke that morning, minutes before my alarm. I felt slightly groggy, but I didn't exactly feel bad. It was more of a physical exhaustion with a mind ready to take on the day. Hell yeah, good on you. What's that like? <laughs> I stretch and quickly change into my clothes before heading downstairs with my bag. As I reach the lobby, I stop and sniff the sudden new smell in the air. Breakfast? I continue my way to the dining room to see Diana laying out a plate covered with sliced fruit. On the table there were delicious smelling eggs, toast, bacon, ham, veggies. I thought I said Vegemite and I was like, yes, I love Vegemite. And juice. I don't know who has vegetables in the morning. Or a ham, actually. That's interesting. Okay. I felt my mouth salivate. But then I remembered that it was Diana serving breakfast and I shook my head. Oh, what are you doing? Up. Come breakfast. I didn't know what you liked, so I made everything I knew humans ate for this time of day. I walk over and scan the table before uh, giggling. And what Diana raises so an eyebrow at me. You didn't even make everything breakfast related. You like forgot what? a couple of things. Coffee, pancakes, waffles. I called out the coffee easily. Diana almost looked almost insulted before looking at the table and recounting the plates. I laugh harder, making her glare at me. I haven't been in the human world long enough to know everything, alright? Unlike the boys, I know little to nothing about what you humans eat in your homes. At the mention of the boys, I suddenly remember them. They treated me like part of their family, caring for me, making sure I was okay beyond anything else. They were servants to me and I let them go. I let out sigh at the memory. Little did I know Diana stared at me the entire time. I shook my head and looked at the table, getting an empty plate and filling it with what I wanted before sitting and eating. Diana remained standing, watching me. I almost felt naked under her gaze, so I looked over, pausing my eating. I already Are you gonna eat? You really what did you know. eat? Yes, curiosity. I wanted to know more about demons. I wanted to know more about her. Of course, I said yes. Diana stared in surprise at me before smirking a bit and reaching into her cleavage. I watched as she pulled out a small purple vial. She popped the cork and poured a, a mere couple sips full into her palm before recoiling, recorking the vial and placing it back in her dress. Diana closed her eyes and closed her hand. What was she doing? This was odd to watch, yet at the same time I was practically at the edge of my seat in curiosity. What was she about to do? Her hand started to open, almost like a blossoming flower and revealed a small peach-sized fruit. It was purple and had almost an enchanting smell to it that made my foam seem a plant almost from disgusting. The plains. We call it a sweet flower. Would you like to try it? Yes. I nodded, staring at the fruit. I looked, it looked absolutely glorious and delectable. Couldn't resist grabbing onto the chance to try it. I do want to learn more about demons, don't forget. Diana nodded before cupping the fruit in both hands and pulling the purple flesh from the fruit, revealing a juicy blackish center as it was cut on the inside. Diana pulled out a perfect slice I and handed say, it to me. I must say, you may be the first human to try this fruit. You should consider yourself lucky. Will do. I nodded, not pulling my eyes away from the fruit, slice in my hand. It was juicy and its clear juice painted over my fingers. I somehow didn't care. I wanted to try it. And savor it. I lifted the small slice to my lips. I took a small bite, feeling ecstasy run through my mouth. I almost couldn't fight back the moan that was erupting from my throat. It was sweet, yet slightly tart. It was the perfect combination, and at the same time it felt so unnatural. I felt not only a pleasure in my mouth, but my body began to feel energetic and warm. All that from a small bite? I swallowed the biteful and let out a pleasurable sigh making Diana smirk slightly at me and with a raised eyebrow. I couldn't lie to her about how it tasted. 
That it it's is. delicious. They're natively grown in my kingdom, so I have the pleasure of enjoying these every day. Hmm. You have I a do. kingdom? The boys are not the only royals in the demon world, sweetie. I just so happen to be a princess. Of course you do. I stand surprised. Was she really a princess? How? She looks so mature. She was more. She was more a queen than princess. Really? You're a princess? You seem more like a queen. For a split second, I swore I saw Diana blush, but then she started laughing you as I shook my head and thought, little girl. You best be careful. Hmm. I may just take your flattery as an invitation to take your energy. Well, okay. I shut my mouth, feeling a blush run across my cheeks. I returned to eating the fruit, hearing her chuckle, and eat the remi remainder of the fruit on her own. Surprisingly, I felt full just from that small slice. How could that be? The only explanation I had was, it was demon fruit, so I mentally accepted it. That's just that. What I didn't expect was Diana leaving, leaning over, Messing lifting my chin to look down at me. I stare at Diana. I stared as Diana came closer and gently kissed my cheek by the corner of my lips, making me gasp slightly. What was she doing? Why was she kissing my cheek? I was red in the face already, and she was taking advantage. Diana pulled away and slightly looked and popped her lips. You had a little juice huh? on the side of your lip. It was bothering me. I ran my finger over where she kissed me and felt my face grow even hotter. Diana chuckled slightly at the sight, making her almost glare at me. I didn't know if she was flirting with me or trying to embarrass me. Either way, she was winning. Eventually, my alarm started going off, reminding me to be ready for Naomi and Suzu. Right. School was a thing. I stood from my chair and grabbed my bag, walking out the dining room. where are you going, might I ask? Ah, I have to go to school. See. I looked at Dinah, feeling that she was up to something. She had her arms crossed, looking to me as if I owed her well, something. Well, I don't exactly what? want you to leave this house with the memories you have. I'd be breaking the rules if I allowed that. But we had a deal. You stay for a day, I keep my memories until you leave. I have to... I still have school to go to, though. Stay home. That. What? I go with you. What? Diana was crazy to, su to suggest going to my school was practically singing a death wish. Everyone would ask about her. What would I tell everyone? I can't let you That's leave crazy. This house with those memories, unless I'm with you. Rules are rules. The rules what rules? Of the world, sweetie. Rules of the world? The rules apply to any about? magical being that lives in the human world. They were established on a day you humans might know as the birth date of Jesus Christ. So what we hysterically typically say is December 25th, even though he was born in March. Wait, so that means Christianity is legitimate? It's a religious faith to others. I won't deny or prove a religion exists because that's a human matter. Magical beings, on the other hand, Good save. don't pay attention unless they're angels from the world of heaven. My curiosity was piqued at the mind like a frantic bird. I wanted to know more. Diana was giving me answers and I wanted to ask more questions. However, Stay, I had to go to school. I was conflicted. And I'll tell you more of these rules. Then I take and your if I go? Now. I was trapped. There was no way I could bring Diana with me without some re repercussion. If she took my memories now, then I would go to school without remembering anything. However, if I stayed, I could learn more, but I'd miss school. Ooh, I'll stay or take my memories. I do want to learn more. Yeah, but school is very important. Do not skip school, children. I bit my lip. Do I really want to say? I could feel my fingers running over my phone and call up Naomi. Without even listening to the phone, I spoke into it. Hey, girls, I feel really sick. Don't worry about coming and don't come over. I'll stay home and get better. I hung up without even acknowledging... Naomi and Susie on the other end. Diana crossed her arms and waited for me to turn to her fully. Threw my bag to the side and looked at Diana, ready to learn more. You want to tell I'll me everything? I, I walked up the stairs with Diana behind me. I glanced in the dining room to see it was already clean. I guess Diana used magic to clean up after us. I continued and wound it up walking into my bedroom. I saw my bed as Diana stood by the balcony window. It was just like last night. So I can ask anything I'll give and you'll you the answer, best right? I can give. Knowing Diana, it could be a white lie. She already has hidden some details, but I guess she has a reason. However, I need to know more than just details. 
The rules of the, the world, what are they? Of the human world, created and approved by all five worlds on the human date, December 25th. Five In human worlds? Terms, there is the human world, heaven, purgatory, hell, and the abyss. I did not know about the abyss, I knew about the others. These what rules are the rules in this the agreement? of otherworldly creatures in the human world. Without them, there would be constant war between angels and devils, while the vampires would try and enslave humanity. Demons are merely vampires. the watchers, but often the devils or vampires will try and coax them into joining them. Of course. So angels and vampires yes. exist too. Angels are from heaven, watching over the human world with a careful eye. Vampires are from the human world, but pass on to purgatory before rebirth. Okay, I get that. I stared at my lap. This was all amazing, yet this wasn't satisfying my curiosity. I wanted to know more. Did, did I want to know just about demons? This was all a huge deal, and I felt bothered over and underwhelmed. So these rules have rules over humans. Humans can't know about Correct. magic at all. Humans, to the angels, need to remain pure and innocent. So they dictated that humans cannot know of the other worlds or of other beings. The rest of us agreed. Only a select few are allowed to know the truth about us. But that's hardly well, fair, isn't it? Yourself. You're barely proficient with magic. Your kind is too focused on who will fight the next war, who will screw the next person. I'm sorry. That sounds about right. But humans are the weakest race in the planes of existence. The only ones who truly protect you are angels. I would say rude, but I slightly agree. I felt anger that she made humans sound inferior. Yeah, we have our faults, but it wasn't like any other race was better, right? There was no way humans were the inferior race. Well, we're not inferior. You are talking to a demon princess, and there's angels, and devils, and vampires. I would say we're pretty oh, insignificant yeah, to now. them. Really? Dinah Sammy, you're looking me up and Let's down before smirking a bit. Trip, shall we? No. I raised my eyebrow. What was she on about? First she wanted me to stay here, and now she wants to go out. What was with this girl? Before I could process... Or protest, sorry. If I could read, it'd be even better. The world start, began to spin around me, forcing me to jump up and grab onto to Diana. She held me as the room spun, practically out of control. My fear escalated, and I buried my face into her shoulder. Wanting it to stop, as if she was trying to prove a scary point, it was working. Ugh. The world slowed down around me and soon came to a halt. Didn't want to look, but gently Diana pushed me away from her body for me to look around. I gasped when I realized I was in a business office. What? Just to what is going on? Where are we? Nothing more. I looked around and felt an air of humility to the room. I couldn't figure out why, but my brain kept me aware that I knew this place somehow. I didn't. Get to think on it long, suddenly grew business and enter the room, stopping what? at the side of Dan and me. You two? I froze. What was going to happen? Were you going to get thrown out, get in trouble, and never be allowed again? This was mild nightmare. Dinah giggled. <laughs> Stopped my thoughts. I looked up to see a smirky Why? looking man, a hand by her lips. Do you not know who we are? For shame, for shame. Diana guided me to a chair and sat me down before sitting on the table. Practically turned red as Diana hiked her dress to where her entire leg slipped out from her slit. She crossed her legs and we tossed her hair gently. Lawyers. This lovely lady is the CEO of the company, and I am her personal secretary. You men, however, are late. I stared at Diana as she stared down the group of men like a tiger would her prey. The group collecting the dish shuffle nervous and surprising me. Were they really believing her lie? How? Diana smiled and lifted her legs slightly, making the men lean in for a possible panty shop. I couldn't help but feel both stunned. One of you needs jealous. to come over here and kiss my foot as an apology. Ew. What? I looked I looked to Diana's foot, seeing it gently bob in slight impatience. Was she seriously going to make one of them kiss her foot? They obviously couldn't be that enthralled with her enough to sleep so low. I let my thought become straight as I watch a man step out from the group nervously and get on his knees in front of Diana. As he gently grabbed her foot in her hand, I te tensed and held my breath. No way. Males. 
The man gently kissed gently kissed over Diana's foot, making almost a surge sly escape from her lips and sent a shiver down my spine. Diana smirked and leaned back on her hands, looking my down at the man before her. Like an obedient servant, the man travelled his kiss to her ankle as Diana let her head fall back with another sigh. Diana, what are you doing? Weak the human mind is. Diana raised a hand above her and snapped her fingers, causing a group of ogling men that remained to straighten up like an army at attention. I felt myself tense and catch my breath in response. I couldn't feel any power over me. Another kiss. With each command, a male would separate from the group and fulfill it obediently. I watched as each man became practically a slave to her with, with him. Diana closed her eyes and let out a pleasurable hum, making my spine tingle again. For some reason, this irritated me beyond belief. Watching her be pampered by enthralled men make something cruel in my chest. Something dark. I wanted it to stop. It's enough, Diana. Diana and the man around her suddenly looked at me. Diana was a little surprised, oh but slightly smirked. Is someone a little jealous? It's not like that. Just stop it. You've proven your point. Diana chuckled, making me wince. Did she stop? She wasn't obedient like the boys who knew with her. Diana then snapped her fingers, surprising me, and the forcing the men around her to huddle together while they were I have proven where they were previously. Oh. I guess I got a little carried away. Diana ran her finger over her lower lip and giggling at my face. I have. Uh, no. You're adorable when you're what? jealous. What? My face turned red instantly and I covered my cheeks, glaring at Diana. She giggled again before slapping her fingers and making the room around us fade away into darkness. A mere breath later, we were back in my bedroom. With both of us on my bed, Diana so, stretched her arms up and smiled at me. Now you understand the vulnerability of humanity. Yeah. I gritted my teeth. Humans weren't weak, as she claimed. I couldn't believe her. I just because we were weak didn't mean that we couldn't know about those who were supposedly more powerful than us. I glared at Diana. That justifies ignorance. How does ignorance that justify ignorance? Ignorance is the ignorance? only safety humans get to have. If humans were to know about us. Do you know what kind of chaos would occur? Yeah, sure. For once, I felt scared. Dinah's eyes were cold as ice as she stared at me into my soul, practically giving me the frightening feeling there of the future I questioned. There are already wars in the human world being fought amongst yourselves. Equality. Dominance. Power. The human world is practically the image of self-chaos. Innocent blood is the spilled human world every day is a mess. in your world. It doesn't matter the color or creed you carry. You think blood is spilled That's now? True. There will be much more if humans knew about otherworldly creatures. Our existences can destroy beliefs and human logic. Yeah, keep it separate. Sounds pretty good to me. I felt the world around me go dark as I stared at Diana. Sounds of scream and battle raged around me, but I kept my eyes to the one person I could see. Is this an illusion? Is this a trick? Religions would crumble feel like it. and civil wars would clash. Paranoia would be a constant so what's happening in now? every human mind. And soon armies will rise up, trying to defend humanity without true knowledge of who we are and what we can do. Vampires would be forced to retaliate and build yeah. armies of their own. And trust me, they're not as friendly as the vampires in your human fictional drabble. Devils would have a heyday and wreak havoc, <sighs> finally finding a collective weakness in the human world to exploit. Angels would have to come down and fight their devil rivals, and the human world would, be cool. would become their battlefield. Okay, I see your point now. I could see the world Diana described flash before my eyes. I could see humans screaming and fighting each other now, trying to figure out who is what and being frightful with every blink. I imagine devils like Maliks ra ravaging cities and killing people while soldiers try to fight back, falling and dying at every turn. The image was scary and I didn't want to imagine it. I shook my head, holding it in both hands before looking at Diana. My room has returned and Diana stared at me. To my surprise, she's concerned face. Make sure that we all stay at peace. To have us all fighting at once would result in a massive cataclysm that would engulf everything and everyone, no matter what you were. Hmm, I can get that. 
Dinah finally broke away from the gaze she held on me and stared at the far wall. I could almost see a look of fear rush through her eyes as she looked away from me. I felt sorry but confused. Demons Covered my concern. Have enough on our collective plates. We don't need to become the backlash victims of broken ignorance. Hmm. Diana. Something in Diana's eyes made my heart almost hurt. What human did you love and got killed? Even though she wasn't looking at me, I could almost see all the emotion that ran her mind just by observing her eyes. The eyes are the windows to the soul. Even when you don't want to depict emotions, your eyes will anyway. I feel bad, terrible even, for questioning her as I did. I was only human after all. Don't put your blame on me. However, I felt the need to comfort her. Something was going on and Diana, wasn't hold Diana was holding it back, as every strong woman does. I like to hold back all the problems they have. Whether or not I learned more by comforting her almost didn't matter. Take her hand. I felt myself gently scoot closer to Diana before laying my hand on hers. Diana stared at me for a brief moment before shaking her head frantically and shutting her eyes tightly. A soft sigh escaped her lips before she looked at me again with almost I'm fine. a new result. I was merely trying to prove my points. You had tension in your voice just then. Mm -mm. The day then became filled with Diana teaching me about magic. Even when the day ended, I needed to learn more. I began to crave it. I begged Diana to stay despite knowing our deal. Diana, despite promising to stay a new day, agreed to stay longer to tell me more. Soon days passed by filled with lessons and examples of magic. Knowing that I would, miss, I would be missed at school, Diana quickly took care of making sure I wasn't missed. Using a simple spell, as she called it, she created an illusion of me going into my place. It was real to humans and acted like me, but it was like a ghost to demons. I kind of wished I remembered the spell. She told me of vampires, creatures that looked like humans who had inner heredities. There were four types of vampires, but all of them were under an oath by the rules of the world not to hunt humans. It was strange. It felt like a fictional novel. It felt like I was in a city of bones. But Diana promised that vampires were not like the books. They had adapted to living with humans, creating a formula that allowed them to walk around during the day. They even had a blood bank as currency and made synthetic blood to quench their thirst. They had real blood to drink, of course, but they got it either through hospital blood drives or black market means. It was surreal. Devils were as chaotic as Maverick was, but they were still all under the command of a very powerful fallen angel, Devil King. Satan. He, however, still had the heart of an angel. He was simply sitting in hell and waiting for an opening into the human world. I hoped it would never come. Angels, on the other hand, were not as I expected. When I thought of an angel, I imagined beautiful human-looking creatures I with still wings and wonder halos. who spread that rumor. Now I explain, they actually look monstrous. Each archetype of angel looked different. And Dad, I couldn't describe them all. The one that stood out the most to me was the serpent. She described it as a mysterious creature that hid behind three large pairs of wings. Well, what if the serpent did look human? Seraphim and tried to find out has not lived to seraphim. spill the secret. I gulped. It was scary to hear for that for some reason. Cause we assume angels are good and perfect, and we assume perfect looks like humans, which is stupid. Angels were strict and were not as forgiving as many claimed. According to Diana, they had a love-hate relationship with humans, and they didn't try to dominate us. They only became... Burps, apparently. They only became mediators for the rules of the world. I'd rather not Why get not? into that. It's not my place Why? to talk about heaven. Only the angels. She also mentioned their method for memory removal. As the self-proclaimed guardian of the human, they had a right to baptize humans who held memories of otherworldly creatures should they find any in the human world. They baptized not only... Wait, hold on. Yeah, they got a Z instead of an S. Okay. They, this baptism not only erases the memories of magic, but erases their entire memory clean. Humans won't remember who they were or what they knew, blank careless. So I got baptized when I was younger, but I was like not even a year old. If so, I might have been a year, so I don't remember anything from that. But yet again, most people don't remember anything from when they're like, what, four down, five down? Most people don't remember what happened last week, but you know. 
Demons, however, unlike the others, were passive creatures that only truly cared for their own world. They had their own lands, kingdoms, and lords living there. The most powerful demon in the Abyss Plane was the Demon Lord. He was the inc incubi's incu incubi boy's fathers, and he was a ruthless man. He had conquered several kingdoms with a massive, indestructible army. Many demons died under his brutality, but when he did conquer, life for demons was like human resilience. I'm sorry. I've got so many burps in my chest. Uh. Renaissance. Many feared what land would he would attack next. However, to everyone's surprise, the demon lord had tried to be peaceful with Diana's kingdom, as she was offered as a bride to one of his sons. I Why would no you accept choice. that? I was barely a child when the decision was made, and when I learned of it, I had accepted it. Why, though? How would you know if you'd be in love with the guy you married? My kingdom would be safe, and I would be able to live with knowing I was able to protect my kingdom. Think of your kingdom first, then think of yourself later. I stared down as she smiled at me with sad eyes. She really didn't want to marry them. It was practically painted all over her face. I'm all about following your heart and, you know, marry the person you love. Don't marry or don't do stuff because other people tell you to. You know, try and live your own life and try and be happy with the person that you're with and if that person makes you laugh and you know help you forget about the dark times and you know you see them having a future together or even simply just you want to spend the next day with them and the next day after that and that's worth marrying for but some people marry because it is about protection and things like that so that's why I'm kind of in a predicament I'm not gonna say anything it was my business to know any more than what she already told me. I couldn't tell this arrangement was detailed beyond agreement, so Is I simply there remained silent. you wanted to know? I stared at her. I stared at her as I thought. Was there anything else I wanted to know? My memories were forfeited in the end, so everything was up for grabs. Yet I couldn't think of a single question to answer. Was it? Was that all I wished to know? No, there was nothing else I needed to know. I felt satisfied. I understand. No, that should be all. Diana stood and adjusted the bottom of her dress before smiling at me. I barely noticed how much time had passed between us. It felt like forever, yet I enjoyed learning more. Is that so? Yeah. I felt bad that I had to lose my memories. However, this was the deal, and according to Diana, de well, demons never go back on the word. if you don't mind, there's one place I need to visit, and I'd rather visit it now than after I take your memories. I'll be gone from the area for quite a while, anyway. Huh? A cemetery. Where do you need to go? There's something I need to do there. It's boring, sadly, but I need to do it. You need to come with so I can watch you. Why did she need to go to a cemetery? Did she have a human friend she needed to say goodbye to? Did she have to meet with another demon? No need to get dressed sure, up. Sure, let me... It's just a brief visit. Nana snapped her fingers and the world melted into black. It stood and walked to beside Diana, unsure of what was happening. Why wasn't the world spinning instead? What was spinning? Was the spinning a trick she did? I felt myself clutch, I clicked my teeth in irritation of the thought. Soon the world grew back into colour and we were standing in a field I somehow recognised. I looked down and regretted it. At our feet was Grandfather's grain storm. It was untouched and as clean as when I last remember seeing it. Here we are. Over here. Here? I said it down as she muttered a small occasion under her breath, in her hands formed a small vase with purple lilacs. She gently knelt down and placed them to pay my beside her grave. Why? Were you a friend of his? I needed to know him, my mind began screaming. Something wasn't right. Why did she know him? How did she know he was dead? Was their relationship? No, What's going on? I oh my god. Of his. I didn't even know him. Then why are you giving him flowers? My mind began to scream louder in my head. What is... What was it? Why? Why? Dinah, why are you, you giving him flowers? I highly doubt you knew this man. Yes, I do. Dinah stared wide out at me. A mixture of fear and surprise mixed in her eyes. Her, My heart began to squeeze tightly in my chest. 
Why would she look at me like that? Answer Help. my question. I said answer my question. I couldn't hold in my voice. I needed to hear her answer. I didn't want to hear anything else. Anything other than her answer would infuriate me. Diana looked down the grave, looking at a small sigh. My heart tightened further. Yes, this man helped the boys answer. come to the human world. He opened a bridge and let them through, before sealing it with a part of his life force. There was more. I knew I there was more. I rained silence took a breath. Day, and when they told me that the boys were gone, I became frantic. Without the contract marriage, the demon lord would have had the freedom to march on my kingdom and conquer it. I couldn't let that happen. So I tried to find a way here. I searched the castle during my brief visit, trying to find out where the boys went. I found it. This man left behind a small trace of his spell, small enough to be undetected by the inhabitants of the castle. Diana looked at me, a look of pain on her face that made me already pain. My already pain heart felt Demon like it was magic punctured by needles. Is best with consent, but takes more energy when forced. So, in a blind need, I recast the spell and used that man's life force to open the bridge once more and seal it completely when I walked through. I didn't know I was taking the rest of his life. You took the rest of my grandfather's life? By the time the bridge closed, Gee. the man had already passed. He was visiting someone in a nearby hospital, so when I left to find the boys, the staff had found him and tried to revive him. I didn't want to take his life. I thought he was a younger man. I didn't know he was as old as he was. It's my fault she... that this man is dead. But I needed to come to the human world, and he was my only chance to get close enough to track the boys down. You... Diana tensed up and stared at me. Her face was painted with regret and sadness, something not like her usual self. You killed my your... grandfather? Your grandfather? Run. I need to leave. I need to go. I quickly turned and ran. Wait! Hearing Diana call out for me from behind. I ran. I didn't look back. I couldn't look back. She started all this. She was the one who turned my world upside down. She was the reason for the chaos I was in. She took my grandfather away. I ran through the gates of the serum of this <sighs> of the <this laughs> I'm like really getting to character into the cemetery. And through the streets to my house. This time the world was in slow motion. I was only going in fast forward. I didn't care what was going around me. I just needed to run. My heart began to freeze in my chest. Painted by the feeling of needles and knives piercing through it. Tears were running down my face. But I knew I wasn't running. I ran through the front gates of my house and sprinted inside. I zipped up the stairs and ran to my room. As I slammed the door behind me. I began to weep violently. I leaned against the door and slid to the ground crying. My wall was crumbling and I didn't like it. My world was broken apart and I didn't want it. All I could do though was cry. My heart denied me from thinking about anything else. I cried. I continued to cry. I let my heart empty of its pain with each tear that ran down my cheek. <sighs> my scream echoed through my room, bouncing around and reverberating into my ear. I didn't care if it hurt to hear. I didn't care about anything anymore. All I cared about was crying. I cut up to a ball and cry didn't even know when I passed out. I didn't remember closing my eyes and letting the darkness take me. The darkness was comforting. I felt sad and this numbing within me. There was no reality in the darkness to haunt me, hurt me. I wanted to stay within it forever. However, my body forced me to open my eyes. I saw the room focus and focus around me and I realized I was staring at the ceiling. I was in bed under my covers. I looked up I sat up and looked around, stopping to see Dinah lean against the balcony window, looking away from me. Why was she here? Did she carry me to bed? I felt my anger wanting to speak out against Diana, but I noticed the puffiness around her visible eyes. Had she been crying? Seeing her bloodshot, puffy eyes made me feel fully aware of my own eyes and how dried they had become after crying. I rubbed my eyes and let a shaky sigh. I stared at Diana, my heart didn't, I didn't want, want to hear it, but I let her speak. Place. I only thought of bringing the boys back to protect my kingdom, so everything else became secondary. I didn't mean to take his life. I did. But you did. I can't ask for forgiveness, but I still am sorry. If I could turn back time, 
I would find another way. I... You know, it's because of you oh. that I met the boys. I looked to my blanket-covered lap. I remember the funeral, the moving, the meeting with the boys. Everything came at me at once. And now I had one puzzle piece that finally fit it all together. If my grandfather hadn't died, he'd be living here, and he'd be the one taking care of the boys instead of me. But he died and gave me his estate, so I came and met them for the first time. I looked at Diana, seeing her sad face. I could tell she was really regretting her choice, and she was upset. I couldn't sense any deception in her. I guess I had to thank you for introducing me to them and to magic, since my grandfather couldn't do it anyway. Diana looked down, pressing I, her lips together, closing her eyes. I need to take your memories now. A deal's a deal. I fulfilled my part and told you everything. I had nothing left to tell you, and you can't keep those memories. I didn't speak. I watched as Diana argued into the air about taking my memories. I felt like she was doubting the deal, not wanting to take away the truth from me. Did I want her to? This is my chance to... Return to ignorance. I'd never remember that she took my grandfather's life. I'd never remember anything she showed me and taught me. I returned to normality. Well, I'm not going to say don't. Deal's a deal. I'm going to say don't. Do you understand me? A look of almost despair on her face. I have kept my eyes to her. You took my grandfather. You took away my grandfather. What gives you the right to take away I... my memories? I'm not done speaking. Diana shut her mouth, listening obediently. I needed to speak my mind. She had no right to take anything away. I knew the truth now, and that was all that mattered to me. Screw the rules. I deserve to remember everything. I was thrown into this mess because of you. No one has the right to take anything away from me. Diana took a step towards me. I was ready to snap at her. However, she gently leaned over me and ran a hand right. over my head. I won't take your memories. What? I stared at her in shock. Was she serious? You're right. Diana smiled at me and stood back you up. You deserve to know everything. It's the least I can do. I felt almost joyful. She agreed with me. This was a huge deal. I still didn't forgive Diana, but it was better to know than to be left in ignorance. Not always, honey. Not always. Eventually, I'd be able to move on. Until then, Diana was willing to stay and teach me the life my grandfather knew in redemption. Sleep and I'll teach you more in the morning. I'll stay a few more days until you know everything. Something fell off, but I nodded, feeling exhaustion drift over me again. Was it natural? I didn't know. My head began to spin and I needed more rest. Diana gently laid me back down and moved a hair from my face. As if a spell, I closed my eyes and fell back into unconscious darkness. My head, my heart was healing and it would take time to heal. Thankfully, it had time to heal and to grow strong. I know. Okay. I know. I had voices and tried to remind I couldn't. You don't need to remind me, Angel. I'm just doing my civil duty. An angel? What was an angel doing here? Why was Diana talking to it? That's Latin. Do what you need to do. I've already destroyed one life. And now I have to destroy another. <laughs> All from my kingdom. Angel, do it now before I change my mind. I'm sorry. What? Within a mere breath, my body suddenly became light as a feather and I became numb. I felt my body float downwards into an empty black abyss as if I was drowning in water. I never saw it coming. My mind became completely blank. I had no memories, no feelings, nothing. I became a blank canvas, a body without soul. Pure, innocent, ignorant. And pure, innocent, ignorant, and we did it. We ended. I think we got one ending. I'm assuming because that seems like a one-ending type of game. Um, after choice. Yeah, I'm trying to see if it like anywhere it says. Extra? Gallery, bloopers, writer's letter. Where is... Gallery? No. 
I'm trying to think. Right is little. <laughs> I like that one. Ultimate. I want to see if it says anything to do with. Um, I'm sorry, I don't want to watch it. Like, if it said about other rendings or anything along those lines, I just wanted to see uh, brain function. <laughs> Bonus! What is the angel's password? All caps, no space. I don't know. I have no idea. Yes. I don't know the angel's password. I wanted to see. I don't think it said anywhere. Ending video? I can't even click on the ending video. Bloopers? Oh, there's bloopers, that's cool. Um, that's the end of Seduce Me the Ultimate. We got the innocent, pure ending. Where I don't remember anything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this series. If you did, let me know in the comments below. And tell me all the different endings there were. I'm assuming there is more than just one ending. Anyway, dry out. See you guys in the next video. Sorry, guys, I'm out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. See ya. We say goodbye to another series. You were a good series, Seduce Me the Otome. And thank you for the person who suggested us. I'm having a mental blank on your name, but... Thank you so much for suggesting.